Nisa. Oluwa Shegun. I didn't mention your name. How are you? Thanking God for life. <laughs> you are still surviving, right? Uh, yes, so. No problem. Do you see value for your money in this class? <sighs> Can you see well, my screen? Can you see my I, screen? I can see your screen. Yes, sir. Okay. The horse, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So start your power BI. Check is there anything you want to tell me? Nothing for now. Okay. No problem. So have you all start our power BI? Waiting. Mm. So, Alpha, are you, have you started your Power BI? Yes. Yes, sir. Oh. Okay, so let's load our file. Click on file, browse to be sure we are under my solution. You remember we have active sales analysis. Load it. Okay, so you remember these are all things we did last week. Uh, I know we have a profit, perform we have overview, profit, performance. Remember, we have product details for drill down and we publish to uh Power BI service. So, again, also launch your also launch your uh Microsoft Edge. Launch your Microsoft Edge and start your. We'll do this. Okay. So let's minimize this. But before we progress, I want to back up what we do. And save as. Okay. Uh, locate my solution. Then back up. Inside back up. Save. And it's asking you to replace. Do you want to replace it? Yes. Have you done that? So that I know if anything happens, I have my original information. And remember I told you, ordinarily I was supposed to delete all the other pages, but I want to keep them there for learning purpose, okay? So that's why on page one to three, they are for demonstrations of learning. We don't really need it. The one we use our analysis for is an overview on profit, my performance and product details. Okay, now that you back up, click on file again, save as, so that we will take it back to the active. Save, so that whatever we are doing will be on active, not on the backup. Do you understand what I'm doing there? Hello class, do you understand what I'm doing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So now, uh, today, I will concentrate on the lab now. I want to look at performing data analysis. Performing data analysis. That's what we want to look at today. Performing data analysis in Power BI. So that's our lab note, and I have shared all our lab note with us. Okay, we've started our edge. This is our edge here. We started it. And if you click on your, uh, if you click on my workspace, 
you will see your sales analysis there. Yeah? Uh, we'll do feedback later, not now. So these are sales analysis. This report, I will click on it. So I just want to show you your, show you our, this our overview. Remember, this is what we publish. These are profits. Remember, performance. Remember, we see our year slicer on overview with year slicer on performance. Remember, we we sit, uh, we synchronize the uh, region slicer on overview with prof with the region slicer on the profits. Am I communicating? And I demonstrated that if I change the year here to 2019. It's going to automatically change it on my performance to 2018 because it's the same. And if I change, if I select all region here in overview, if you come to profit, all region will be selected. So if I unselect here, if you come to profit, all region will be unselected. That is the purpose of the syncing. And if you come here and say, okay. I'm selecting only the American regions, Canada or Central is America control, North East, North West, South East, South West. These are all American regions. If you come to your profit, definitely every information you have here will be for American region. Am I communicating with you? So, and we also learn about how to use button to alternate your chart. I can have many charts on the on the public on the Power BI service. So click on buy. I want to see the bar chart and to see the column chart. So you can see that. Okay. And I, I want to also remind you that it's only on your Power BI service like this. You can showcase your analysis to the uh your management team. And it's not necessary that all of them will be in the same office. The moment they are all in your office email environment, anywhere they log in, either they log in in Pakistan, they log in in Saudi Arabia, they log in, log in, in Australia, they log in in USA, they log in in Nigeria, they log in in, in, in South Africa, the Republic of Congo, Gambia, anywhere in the world where they log in. The moment you publish on the Power BI service, they will be seeing the same thing like this. They will come on board, you can discuss with them, you can showcase to showcase, they can criticize, they can tell you um this your sales and profit margin by month does not capture our sales. Go and check the data, they can criticize you. They can tell you that the quantity by category is not is not is not good enough for me. I wanted to see some other things there, okay? So they can tell you that this does not depict the value for me. I can't see the value here. Show me the value, show me the quantity on the graph. Those questions can come up, okay? As we are progressing, we will see that. So let's go back to our uh, deck. For you to make any changes at all, it has to be on your desktop, okay? Uh, let me see. A question came up. We cannot ascertain the quantity, the clothing, bike, house, and co. So you can come to your um, uh, come to format visual. Okay. Under your data label. Okay. Put on your data label. Okay. Uh, Say, uh -huh. you want to see it inside the end, like that. Okay, I'm putting the label there. Uh, data label. Let me see, I can inside them, value. Okay. Time romance, let me change the font. Let me make it 12. 
and make it bold. So can you see now that I've demonstrated, you know, they were asking me that you just show me by, by, by what value, what quantity does it represent? Now I've shown them the quantity. So when I publish, they will see it there again. Am I communicating? Can you go back again, sir, please? Okay. Uh, let me do something. This is where this bar was when I was, uh, uh, let me go back to the edge. You are showing the management that this is my quantity by category. The lower shots, we are saying this is quantity by category. One of the, one of the executive director now raise up. Hey, Mr. Analy Analytics, I can see bikes. I can see clothing. I can see components. I can see accessory. What's the exact value? What exact quantity does this bar represent? Are you listening to me? Yes. One of the executive director look up, raise up and say, hey, they are, uh, they are professional. Whichever way, some of them are hilarious. Mr. Grandma, thank you for all your speaking. Under your quantity by category, yes, I can see bikes, clothing, components, and accessories. Yes, I appreciate. I knew that they are different colors. They are longer than one another. From this, from this, your chart, I can't place exact value the bar stands for. What is that quantity? You are telling me that the quantity of bikes that have been sold for this period, right? Quantity of clothing that has been sold, quantity of components, quantity of accessory. Yes, but I can't place value. I can't see the exact value. I can't say I sold 2 million, 10 million, 100 million. What is the exact value? Or you want me to start placing ruler on the on the graph for you to be guessing? They are not, they don't want to guess. They want to see the exact value. Do you do you understand the question they is asking now? Yes. Good. So now to answer his question, you will now go back. You will come back to your Power BI desktop. You can't do anything on your Power BI service. What you have on your edge is Power BI service. For you to make a change, you come to Power BI desktop. This is your Power BI desktop. Okay? You will select the chart he's talking about, this one, and you will now go to your uh, format visual. Remember, this button here will give you the visualization, the, the symbols, and all the break, and all the feelings, okay? But you want to format it, you come to this place. And since he's talking about, he can't see the value, he's talking about the labels on the chart. So simply come to your label, data labels. By default, your data label is always off. That is why you don't see any data label on any of the charts. So it's always off. So you come to this place and put it on. Remember, it's because I have modified, that's why it comes out like this. So if you open this, you will see that under your position, that's why I said I want my label to be inside the end. I can put it outside the end. Can you see that? Okay. I can put it inside center. I can put it inside base. Most of the time, I prefer to be inner inside. It all depends. Your man may say I want it. They might tell you the way they want it. But you've answered the executive director's question on that. You can see that I have sold two point the two hundred and eighty thousand right two hundred and eighty thousand clocks for this period. I sold two point seven is it thousands or million two thousand two point two hundred and two uh hundred thousand seven hundred bytes components two hundred thousand then less than hundred thousand in your assessor so the guy can now see can put value to the graph. 
Am I communicating? Yes. Good. Any other question? Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Okay. So let's proceed. So we've seen uh, all of that is okay. In this task, in this one we want to look at, you will create a live connection to Power BI data set created in the last task and then create the seal exploration. So on your Power BI desktop, here now, on your Power BI desktop, oh, sorry, I think I need sheets. Let me close this, I don't need this. Okay. On this place, we want to create, we've already, we want to create a, on Power BI desktop, if you already have your Power BI open from previous, like close, close that instance by default. Okay, we we'll close it. In the home ribbon, select get data come to this place get data okay get data power bi data set click on power bi data set okay see your sales analysis data set Hold on a bit. Okay. Data server. Data analysis. Let me see. Okay, this is this analysis data set. So click on connect. How do you get your answer? I didn't see it. Though. Okay. Uh, hold on, let me close this. Uh, hold on. Oh, it's connecting to the data set. Look at get data set. Yeah, it's loading my already. Okay, sir. Click on this. Power BI data sets. Okay. So click on sales analysis here. Yeah. Okay. This. Then you click on connect. So I've already connected to it. Yes, sir. Okay. So. So navigate to file and save. Save the file name as sales exploration. So you want to click file, save as. Says exploration. We can see. So we have that. So we have that in our. Let me see. File, brown. So we we'll see this exploration of our key. That's okay. You will now create two report pages. On each page, you will work with a different visual to analyze explore data. So we want to create two reports to to visual to analyze and to explore data. At this junction, I will take out this line chart on this is exploration. I don't need it here. Remove the line chart. Yes. Good. So, in this time, you create a scatter chart that can be animated. So, let's go on. On page one, as a scatter chart, again, I would prefer to keep everything. Or still on this page, 
page one. So rename this one as scatter shot. Please, I am keeping them in one sheet for learning purpose. When you are working in office, don't keep as much of these things together like that, right? Don't keep it. So add a scatter chart to this place. Come to your come to your visualization. Away from probably you are still on your format page. Come back to your build visual. Look at your scatter chart. Can I see scatter chart? So click on it. So this is your scatter chart. Position and let your scatter chart feed the entire page like this. Let the scatter chart feed the entire page. Are we together? Hello, class, are we together? Hello? Yeah, here, yes, sir. Okay. So if you are with me, let's add the following fields to our scatter chart. Okay? Let's add business type from the cell. It will look like Let's add so so says from says so come to says come to says here is your says feed click on says and I remember I always tell us to correct this is not some of says so rename it says then. Add your profit margin. By default, when you are working, is always uh, attending to x axis force, except when you drag yourself. So go to your sales profit margin, click on it. It's going to add it to your y axis. So you have your sales on x axis. Can you see your sales below? And profit margin, that's profit margin against your says you are looking at what's my profit when i make a sales of 100 million what's my profit when i make a sales of 2 billion what's my profit it's not good when if your profit is minimal to your uh if your, if your profit after you deduct your cost of production cost price is minimal you are not working no then you add your business type to legend so you you subtract you uh, collapse that go to your reseller there's a reseller take your business type and add it to the legend so you drag this time around or let's check it does it no he's taking it to value that's not what i want to drag your business type to legend. Okay. So if you look at it now, it shows some dot 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 on top there. Then add sales quantity. There is a space there size. Add your quantity from sales. We'll have your reseller. Then come to your sales and add quantity. There yeah, is quantity, add it to the size here. Yeah. So it's telling you quantity, rename it. Every, every value will automatically be added together. Then finally, there is play axis there, okay? Add your quarter from date. So go to your date, 
Here is your quarter. So drag it and put it on play as is. Can you see that? In your filter pane, remember I explained to you that your filter and slicer, they are doing the same thing. But your filter is always sitting with your Power BI while your slicer is dynamic. That's the major difference. So in the filter pane, add, add category from product field. So the filter on this page well earlier. So here is your filter. Filter on this page. Where is that? See, filter on this page, this one. Okay. So go come and add your come to your product category. Add your category to filter on this page. And filter by bias. So every other thing that I'll be showing there is going to be back information, but collapse it. Good. In the filter card, filter by bias that we've done to animate the chart at the bottom left corner, play. We want to animate the chart you just did, eh? We want to animate it. So look at this bar that has been added. The last thing you did was when you add cutter to play as is. So that's what created this. So you can now click on this to start it. And wash is moving in this way scatter chart operate. So some of our colleagues that are statistical oriented, they understood what those movements are meant for. They understood it. Okay, so in your team, there's always a statistician there. Good. And if you see play it again, is it going to draw a different pattern for you? If you click on any of this ball, you are made of what will happen. Click on this. So it's going to show you all the line that the ball passes through. Can you see that? All the line the ball passes through. Can you see this? These are the line it passes through. Any question, please? A, a, a good statistician will look at these orange balls and lines and interpret for us. So, Watch the entire animation cycle for 2018 to uh, 2020. Okay, you want us to watch so you can play again. Definitely, this thing is covered the whole of the year I mentioned here. Okay, so what let me take it again. What the animation from if you look at the graph is between uh. All is between 2018, 2018 to 2020. So, play the animation again. So, the scatter shots allows understanding the measure or the measure value simultaneously. In this case, order quantity, series revenue, 
and pump and profit margin. So that is what this scattershot is giving you understanding of. Each bubble represents a reseller business type. Changes in the bubble size reflect increase or decrease order, order quantities, while horizontal movement represents increase and decrease in the revenue. So, and vertical movement represents increase and decrease in profitability. Am I communicating? Yes, you are. I have a question. Yes. Does, the, does the position of on the S and Y axis and the legend, does it affect the movement of the balls? Uh, not really. It doesn't. Okay. Thank you. So let me play it again so that you see it. So you see the way it plays now. So if you click on any of the ball, it's going to tell you the pattern. When the animation stops, select one of the bubbles to reveal its tracking over time. So what it's telling us is if I click on this blue, so it's telling me the, it's revealing its tracking over time. The part where I look at where it starts, move to this place, yeah, yeah. So, and you see that this guy will move from here, come to this place, come to this place, come to this place, come, come, come. So, that's the way the shot will move. Over the cursor over any bubble to reveal a two tip describing the major values of. So if you point to any of them, it's going to give you two tip. So it's going to tell you some of the things that you don't look at. Uh -huh. So hope that is clear. Yes, sir, it's clear. But sorry, sir, just to take you back a bit. When we change the uh before we did the scatter chart yeah. when we renamed the is it active or backup to sales exploration yeah backup no first thing is when we look we first go and save in backup yeah the first step to make a copy when you are moving down then you now save back in active so that whatever amendment i am doing is on active not on backup I know, sir. I mean, you renamed um, the sales analysis to sales exploration. Oh, sales exploration. Okay. Yeah. That's because I wanted to add this to it. You click on file. Okay. No, sorry. Before you name, you come to your data set here. Are you looking at me? Yes. Under your data set, you click the job brand arrow. You click Power BI data sets. So you pick any one of them, and I pick sales analysis. That's the one I want to connect to. Click on connect. So okay. it's going to connect. That's that about that. I think we hear that. So my says so, value cannot be no parameter name data source. Come again. My says something went wrong. Value cannot be no parameter name data source. Can you share screen? Let me see it. Let me stop sharing. I was joined in on my phone. I'm just hurriedly putting on my system. Oh, on your phone? I was watching on my phone, then using my system to do the work.
عفوا I've done it. Okay. Okay. Data power by data set. Hold on, it can't be here. Close this thing. Close this window. Uh, since you save it in backup and save it in active, close this window. Let's start again. Close. I mean your Power BI or not your Google Meet, you know. Don't save. Don't save. Yes. Okay. Start the Power BI again. Click on your file. Oh, close this. Okay. Now click on file open. Browse. I'm waiting. Sorry, my guys, it's loading. So it's loading our graphs and co. Good. So we are here now. Okay. Uh... Okay, great. So since we've already since you've done backup before, no problem. Click on file. No, sorry, click on get data set. Uh Power BI, okay. Okay, so you yeah, are yeah. click on this is analysis. That's the only thing you have in your own. So come here and click on connect. Wow. 
Wow. Which parameter? Did you delete anything? Why is this saying value cannot be known? Which value is he talking about? Click on uh, name data source. Copy this thing to Notepad. Let's see. Let me see the content. Launch a Notepad. Let me see what is inside. What is he complaining about? No, 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 no. Notepad. Oh, there was face, okay. Wow. Uh, well, I may have to allow you to slide. You can send this thing to me. Send to my, give it to, how do you send it to me? Send it to Wumi. Wumi will share with me. I will check. I may want to review. I want to know the cause of that problem. But you may have to follow me so that I don't waste Others, this look like something peculiar. Maybe one of the data has been tampered with in your system or anything. Okay, so stop sharing and keep following me. Sorry for that. Good. So you can see my screen, right? Let's move on. So through this, we've done a scatter shot. So look at the mayor you are looking at. Profit margin. What is this? Profit margin. Quantity. Profit margin. See this. Okay, so you hover on it and see it like that. Okay, so we can see the tracking on that filter as well. We are so in the filter pane, filter by clothing, come to our filter playing category here. Okay, instead of by, we move by filter by clothing. Can you see? the pattern of clothes. Okay. Remove this as part of uh, components. Remove this the accessory alone. So each of them will have a pattern they follow on the line chart. So save the Power BI desktop, click on file, save as So, so click on yourself 
says exploration and click on save. Yes. You want to take another step, you want to create another thing, you will create a forecast to determine possible future of sales revenue. You want to forecast what well, sales revenue will be in the future. So we should add a new page. So double click on the page number and Call it forecast. Okay. Add a line chart visual to the report page. So look at your graph. This is line, sorry, this. This is a line chart. Add it to your environment. To position it that to fill the entire page. So then expand it to cover the whole of the space. Add two items to X, X axis dates and Y axis says. Okay, come to date, check on your date here, go to exercise, then come to collapse it, so when you finish your date, come to sales. So check on your sales. Okay, so so your sales is. If you look at the graph you have there, you will see the chart together, but only stop at January twenty twenty. So in the filter pane, add the, the year filled to the filter on this page well earlier. So look at filter on this page. Come and add under your date. In, your, in the filter on this page, so put it here, yeah. Filter by two years. So check your financial year 2019 and financial year 2020. You can see the breakdown 2019 and 2020. When forecasting over a time, you will need at least two circles of year. That's why you pick 2019 and 2020. You want to project what might likely happen in 2021 of the data to produce an accurate and stable forecast. So add also the product category field to the filter on this page. So we are going to filter on this page. We want to add category to it. So come to your So, create on this page, add a category below it. So, and filter by bias. So, you allow your filter on this page, your category will drop under financial year 2019 and 2020 for bikes. So we'll add this here. Okay, you have put on two items page now. To add a forecast beneath the visualization page, 
Let analysis. Ok. Il y a la visualisation P. C'est l'aide de l'analysis P. Je dis analysis P. So, click on this place. If you look below here, you see forecast on it. That, that's why you see this other A getting darker. Okay? If on it now. I wish you together. I hope you are together. Yes, sir. Okay. So now pull out the filter to the last piece. Expand your focus section here. Expand this. So turn the focus on that we've done. Configure the following forecast property, then apply. Let the unit of our forecast be months. The forecast length, one month. One. If you want to draw your graph, remember you, you use reasonable values. Then go to seasonality. This and make it 365. So confi confidence in Tava. Look at the confidence in Tava. Make it 80. So when you are through with that, click apply. So that works. You can see the impact of it by that black area on your chart. That's the forecast. That's what will happen ahead. So in the live visual, notice that the focus has extended and one month beyond the history, okay? As I said, one month beyond the history data. The gray area represents the confidence. The wider, the confidence, the laser, the less stable, and therefore the less accurate the focus is likely to be. So your focus must not be on large scale so that you don't miss it out. Was well, small, small. Okay. When you know the length of the cycle in this case, annual, you will enter the seasonality points. Sometimes it could be weekly, seven, uh, there are seven days or monthly, 30 days. So our cycle here that we are forecasting is over. Look at the 365, a whole year. We are looking at 12 months. What we want to project the kind of sales that we can have in the next year, next financial year. Am I communicating with you guys? So we come to the end of our analyzing data. So in this task, you will complete the lab. In Power BI, select the scatter chart page. Come to your scatter chart page here. Save the Power BI desktop file. Okay. So we have to save it. Power BI desktop. Click on File. Click on Save.
one, two, three. Yes. Okay. God has been saved. Good. We've done that. So we want to publish our current uh we want to publish our current part to we want to publish it to Power BI service. So go to home, you will see publish here. Can't see that. So we want to publish it to that my workspace on the home ribbon. So click on publish. So now that select my this time around, I'm coming. Okay. So I now select my workspace and say select. So it's publishing it now. So success, click on got it. So I've been able to publish it. Come to our edge, click this uh, refresh button here. So now that Let me take it again. It seems it didn't save my forecast. Natasha, I didn't save these two. So let me click on File. Oh, I know what happened. So let me come to this place. I'm looking at different thing. So refresh again. So under my work, under workspace, under my workspace, click on it. So look for sales and sales exploration. Today is uh, 14 11, Abby. Oh, today is the 20 11. Okay, so click on I have some. Maybe I needed to delete some of all this old thing I have here. So this is the one that I, I just published now. Click on this. Click on Sales Exploration here. So 
So click on sales exploration that you have here. So that we see all the data sets. So you can see that your forecast and your scatter chart is there now. Click on the animation. You can see it clearly on your Power BI, on your Power BI service. Okay. Look at your forecast. So these are how you, uh, this is how you add more analysis to your data, to your Power BI. Any questions? So this takes me to the end of this. Any questions? Are we okay? So that takes you to the end of data analysis, more data analysis in Power BI. So the next thing is, is to create dashboard. Should I leave this one for next week or you want to also check now? Hello class. Yeah, I think I think that, that that can be next week anyway. So that, that yeah. can be next. Okay. Yeah. Since we, Thank you so see, much. So that is, uh, that is the only thing that remains. So we we'll okay. do this one. So we'll round out with it next week. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. So we are finishing next week. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Oh, right. DG. How are you doing? Yeah, 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 I've been kind of all over the place. I always yeah. kind of listen. I don't, I don't talk anyway. So, oh, okay. well, thank you so much for yeah all this stuff. Anyway, yeah. Please, I need a favor from you. My let my students should be able to frank with you. I want them to read me comment. Please let me get. I want to. That's the way I can improve myself. Let them. Let them point out this area, this instructor doing well here. We want will I love him to improve here. Please help me make them understand that they need to come up with frank comments so that I can improve myself and I can be a better international instructor. Okay. Uh, we always get um Feedback. Every uh, feedback every two two weeks anyway. So okay. then at the end of the internship, there's also a feedback from that they need to fill as well. So yeah, okay. so it's normal. Yeah, it's, it's the standard practice anyway. So that we normally. That's, so if there's anything that we need to relate back to you on the feedback, we'll definitely come back to you. Yeah. Oh, th thanks a lot. So okay. I've also no. I I promise there maybe. I promised them a live project. You know, the the Power BI is too loaded for me to bring in a live project. Maybe one of well, one Saturday I will set them up. I will I will give them I will give them a long of project to do so they can be communicating to me. We, that we can do that. That's our layer work to capture what we've done. So it's, that one will be outside class. Maybe one of the one Saturdays we can fix a time. We can meet for one hour, review it again, and move on. So that's what I explained to them. But officially, we will round up the class next week. Okay. All right. Cool. No problem. That that's fine. So, uh, I know that we by next year for these guys we are going to be starting the advanced class or as many people that are interested in the advanced level which is a follow-up program uh do apply for it so uh, i'll come back to you and i will speak to you on, on this okay. one as well. anyway, yeah so we'll yeah but okay. yeah in terms of the intent as many people that are interested in the follow-up program you want to be involved in the advanced um, program please do apply or if you are struggling to apply do let me know so ASAP. Like I said, we are only looking for a few, maybe five or six anyway. So once okay. we have the number, so we would kind of yeah, close close the 
application. So I would say you should apply as well as possible. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you, everyone. So yeah, I will we'll see you again next week. Yeah. 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 You're All welcome. Right. Thank you. Thank you.